Hello, and this is uh, Jamie um, from Money Rider uh, Horse Racing TV. I um, hope you're all staying safe. Merry Christmas to you all. Um, happy Boxing Day. Um, we're going to do a selection for Kempton for the King George V Chase Blue Ribbon event, Grade 1, 3 miles. And I've been adding a look at the uh, some of the um, contenders in the field. And... Uh, Frodon uh, will be the main danger um, for me. He's um, he's trying to um, uh, recapture his uh, his title from last year, which he'd done really well um, with Briny Frost once again on board. Um, he'll be really be up the pace again, um, like he did with at uh, Dan Royal, um, winning um, well by three and a quarter lengths against Galvin. I think Galvin is a is a gold cup horse i would imagine he's a top horse um but the thing for me with frodon is that um he can jump really really well but he's won uh with a small field um which is uh, you know a selective um small uh, small field and obviously he's he's obviously took the uh the scruff of the race at dan roll and winning really well um so and also um, and also he uh, he won at Sandown, um, winning by a neck um, against uh, um, uh, Mr Fisher, who's in the field for the King George, and that was at near at three miles as well. Um, so he's he's going to be a, a really uh, main danger for me uh, for Frodon, and I would like to see him win it. Um, the next one is lost in translation. He's be, he's he's won once over at Ascot. Um, the the stables in in back in form, um, which is great to see. Won well, uh, like I said at, at Ascot. Um, but is it going to be you know uh, a, a successful um, another win at Kemp at Kempton? No, but I reckon he'll be. Um, he will be uh, a gold cup horse um, for me as well, so that will be a, a, a good old prep for for the gold uh, for the gold cup. Um, the two Irish candidates, um, Manila Indo, well, um, finishing third in the the race that Frodon won um, was a little bit disappointing. Um, I think um, quite a lot of people were expecting him to do really well in his first run um, in Dan Royal. Um, Mind you, that was his first run. He might need he might needed that run. Um, so it'd be interesting how he does at, at Kempton. And the other um, Irish candidate is the Willie Mullins, um, Astron Forlong. Um, he needs to pick himself up. Um, he was like he was the one of the two good horses, like good horses um, in Willie Mullins' stable. Um, unseated um, the rider in the John Durkin uh, grade one at Punchy Stand, so he needs to up his up his game. Um, but I've looked at others like with Candan um, Cand Zobo. Um, I don't think uh, he might get pulled up. Um, not sure. Um, he might he might have a bit of a um, eating our words again uh, from Paul Nichols. He's always a top trainer. He always brings you know. Uh, other horses into the fire does it really well but my selection um, looking at the form and everything is the Chantry House uh, trained by um, Nicky Anderson uh, ridden by Nico de Boinville he's a new horse on the blocks so to speak he's a he's a young horse he's a seven year old um, Frodon is a nine um, he's done really well he's, he's got he's got form that speaks out um, speaks out for himself there um, he was um the two runs that he he ran at three miles, um, run uh, run well, won well at Aintree, but the the one that really really impressive was at Sandown, um, one one by thirty seven lengths, beating the the big getaway. Okay, the big getaway was from uh, Colin Tizard's um, uh, yard, most probably at the time. Um, Colin Tizard's horses were trying to find their feet, but he pulled away. Um, 37 lengths and it was impressive and his jumping was really good at, at, at Sandown um, so I'm wondering 
does would um, Kempton um, as the course would suit him? Not sure. That's a question mark. He gets the trip three miles definitely. Um, so that will be um, it. Be an interesting uh, race, a uh, great race to watch. But my selection um, is a Chancery House. But the main danger is Frodon, where I would really would like to see him win again. But my selection, because I've gone against, which I've gone against before, and I've got done got done so well done to mark but i've gone uh, i've gone against road on again but my selection is chantry house in the uh, king george v uh, chase at kempton evening everyone as you can see we're back to uh doing it separately this time round again uh for the boxing day bonanza that is the king george as we did previously i think it was a couple of years back um i think when covid first kicked in um, I know the lads have explained probably why we're doing it separately. I think it's quite obvious why we're doing it separately, but everyone's well and everyone is looking forward to what is going to be another great day's racing on Boxing Day at Kempton. Um, again, we task ourselves to just have a go and have a stab, see if we can pick a winner. Uh, I mean, between the four of us, you'd like to think we know enough now to <laughs> grab something from this one. Um, and I think two of us are in, are in agreement with uh, this one. Uh, I believe it's myself and Jamie. Um, I th believe we've been chatting prior to this uh, and we both like the chances of Chantry House. Um, again, it's always a tough one, the King George. It always throws up something. Um, you've got two previous winners in there. You've obviously got a Gold Cup winner coming over from Ireland, obviously depending on what happens there. Uh, a yarding form in the Tizards that seemed to be bouncing back quite nicely after a, a poor season last year. Obviously, there were reasons behind that. Um, but yeah, for me, Chantry House, I think you, we're talking about a horse that ignore his last run. Obviously, it's a two-runner race. I believe it's it's one of those you you still got to beat what's in front of you. But previous to that, this is a horse that has beaten Sham Blue by a collective 40 lengths in two races. Now, we know what Sham Blue obviously looked like it was going to be capable of in the Charlie Hall uh, when coming three out, coming down three out, sorry. Again, we don't know what the full potential is there, but to be going away from the likes of Fusil Raffles and Surname, it says a lot about a horse. So Chantry House, as long as Nico doesn't give Frodon too much, say, respect and, and the lead, because we know that that horse, if given the race, is going to be a bugger to beat. I mean... Certainly over the last two years, not many horses have taken on the Irish in their backyard and won, especially when it's beaten the likes of Galvin, who is going to go on to great things. I'm a big fan of that horse, um, Manila Endo, with the great Rachel Blackmore on there. Um, and to go over there and do the job that Bryony and Frodon did is remarkable, really, when you consider what the Irish have been doing to us over previous years in our own backyard. So we know that horse is going to be difficult to pass. We know Manila Endo will see the trip. Uh, ground shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's starting to give a bit now. So it, this is a Gold Cup winning horse. Um, but I'd like to think Chantry House, I don't think the track's going to be a problem. I don't think the ground will be too much of a problem. And I think Looking at the day overall at Kempton, I think it could probably top a very good day for the McManus Hoops. Uh, when you look at Epiton going up in the hurdle before that, he against the likes of Goshen and, and, and horses like that. So I do feel that going for more of a price, and there's always a, a, a twist to the King George, as we've seen in previous years, I think I'm going to take a step. I think most places now is 11 to 2. I think it's a fantastic price. Um, and I do think that as long as the jumping stands the test and Frodon doesn't give, get given too much rope to just go on and dictate the race, I do believe that Mamanis will have a great day at Kempton on Boxing Day. Um, so yeah, on that note, I hope everyone has a fantastic and safe Christmas, obviously. And um, fingers crossed, I won't be in the uh, studio on my own next time. The lads will be with me once again for some more Guinness and some more racing chat. So uh, yeah. Have a good one, everyone, and we will speak to you soon. Good evening, everyone. This is Mark from the Money Rider team. Um, 
Unfortunately, as you can tell, that uh, we're all doing separate videos um, due to the recent Omicron variant of the COVID-19 pandemic. After a recent discussion uh, with Sean, Glenn and Jamie, we've opted to do our own little separate videos. A bit gutted, but it would have been nice to have got together just before Christmas um, to have a lot of discussion about some top racing, which is coming up over the Christmas period. I'm here today to give you a selection for one race which takes place on Boxing Day, and that is the King George the Sixth Chase at Kempton Park. It's a race that I've absolutely loved for many, many years, um, and I'm hoping um, that everyone will be tuned in um, to watch this race. So I'm giving you my selection, and my selection is the Mighty Frodon. It is a horse that I've always been a massive fan of, um, a nine-year-old, which I feel gets better and better and better with age. Um, had a recent good comeback beating the likes of uh, Galvin, um, who is, um, is, is, is a top horse. I think we'll go on to do big and better things. Uh, current 16 to 1 price shot for the Grand National. And uh, the Cheltenham Gold Cup winner in Manila Endo, um, which was a bit disappointing in that race. But Frodon loves running fresh, jumped the fences really, really well, um, and landed that grade one, a third of its successful career. Um, and Bryony Frost, she's having a sensational season, despite the, the situation away from racing with her at the moment. Um, I think she's been absolutely fantastic. She's been professional about everything, and um, she's definitely landing some top races. And this is one I think that she can take with another grip. I stipulated with Jamie last year, the uh, championship pace and... They dictated the pace, you know, there's some top quality horses in there, Clandes Oboe's there again, Chantry House is in there as well, waiting patiently, and many, many more top quality horses. But I feel this is one that Frodon can take. Um, it's a current 11 to 2 shot, um, compared to 25 to 1 last year. Um, and he, he, he's got the world at his feet, and I'd love to see him reign supreme again, um, and then potentially go on. Uh, to the Cheltenham Festival next year. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Uh, my selection for the King George is Frodon. I hope everybody um, has a very safe and Merry Christmas. Um, and from the Money Rider team, um, safe betting, stay safe. Um, and we hope to all be back in the studio soon uh, for another filming. Goodbye for now. Hi there folks, as the lads have alluded to earlier on in the video, we are unfortunately doing a video each on our own for the King George. We was going to try and get together, uh, but uh, we decided safest not to. Ironically, I then found out I need to isolate, uh, which is up on Christmas Day of all days. So anyway, never mind. Um, so as I say, the lads giving you their selection. Um, I'm going to go with Heart Like Mark. Um, my choice is going to be uh, Lost in Translation. Um, it's not the most confident sort of choice ever. Um, he's pulled up twice. He pulled up last year when um, Frodon won it. Um, he then had a disappointing uh, run in February, losing to Secret Investor. Um, and then at 40 to 1, he pulled up again uh, at the Cheltenham Festival. Um, so, yeah, you know, look, let's be honest, the confidence isn't really there, but the heart is. Um, he did bounce back really well, uh, beating Master Tommy Tucker in uh, November. So, uh, yeah, as I say, heart ruling, just going with him, hoping that maybe somewhere near back to his best uh, as he was a couple of years ago and he looked really good. So uh, let's just hope he can sort of be one of the ones that sneak under the radar at 10 to 1, I think, at the minute. Um, a reasonable price for, uh, you know, a bit of a gamble. So uh, there's my choice um, for the selection. Um, as the other lads have also said, we all hope you have a really wonderful Christmas and stay safe. Uh, my plan's a little bit out of the window, uh, but never mind. It's, uh, you know, just Christmas and it's all about the kids in it these days anyway. So never mind. Uh, take care, everyone, and uh, hopefully we we'll see you again in the new year. Ta-da.